to the floor, hey, we gon' dance And when we get there, best believe we gonna do what to step Ain't no drama in here, so don't stress Step to the right, then side to the left Good evening and welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday and hopefully a little bit better for you. All right, so tonight we are back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and the best indie music out there. We also welcome a very talented actor, Gary L. Gray, who got his start on The Cosby Show and has gone on to do some amazing projects. And he still uh, is working and doing his thing, and he'll be talking about that later on in the show. Then in Hot Topics, we're discussing everything from Cardi B and her husband Offset. They purchased Lamborghinis over the weekend, um, posted about it, and got some backlash. Uh, also, the update on Demi Lovato. You know, she OD'd last week. Uh, update on how she's doing. And then Monique, she uh, defended comedian Roseanne Barr after her Reese's tweets. All that much more in Hot Topics. Listen, I want to remind you, we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestevenightshow.com. When we come back, Hot Topics, right back after this. Spending time, getting to know some things, yeah, major vibes, you're playing my favorite keys, yeah, on my mind.
much, baby. Tell me how you want it, baby. Tell me how you like it, baby. Tell me how you want it, baby. Tell me how you like it, baby. Tell me how you want it, baby. Tell me what you like to say. Scream it to the every pray. Stephen Knight nice Show. Miss Parker, how's it going? Happy Monday. How are you? I cannot complain. And yourself? You had a good weekend? Had a great weekend. Recovering from the weekend, as always. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the fortunate thing about us working from home. We get Monday morning, even though we still work, we get Monday morning to actually not have to, you know, go into the office so we can kind of recover and get our minds right for the rest of the week. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> Definitely a blessing. Yeah, it is. It is. What's going on with you, Chike? Sir, how are you? K 
Cannot complain. Cannot complain. All right. How was your weekend? Weekend was pretty good. I cannot complain. I, I, I was working for the Stephen Knight show. Oh, well, hey, we love that. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> well, our question of the day is, when it comes to picking a significant other, how important are looks to you? Ms. Parker? Um, I think I think attractiveness to the person is more important than looks. So you can be attracted to somebody based on a lot of different reasons. That's not necessarily looks. So I think attraction is important. Yeah. Um, you know, looks is really subjective, but I think attract, being attracted to the person, regardless if it's their looks, how they carry themselves, whatever that attraction is, I think it's important in keeping things going. That's true. That's true. How about you, Chike? Yeah. Um, I, I've learned when love happens, sometimes it doesn't matter with, you know, the package, you know, because looks are fleeting. You know, that's superficial. Mm-hmm. What really matters is the heart. And it's And believe it or not, some people may not believe this. Uh, but you know, a, a fond heart can make you see things beautifully. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, I believe that as well because I've met like really attractive people, um, and I'll talk about attractive females. As you meet them, and then you talk to them, and just their way of thinking or their something that you know, just that can take away from it. Where I've met people who maybe weren't as attractive, but the way they carry themselves, their their thought pattern, you know, that, that stimulation, that can cause them even more attractive. So I do agree it is a, attractive, you know, it's not always physical. You know, the, I think physical attraction is important, but I think that, uh, you know, the way that person carries themselves, and you know, can also help with it, anything, if that makes any sense. But yeah, tweet us at Stephen I Show, SA Show, and let us know when it comes to picking a significant other, how important are looks to you? Someone did say, I will say it was, it was kind of funny. Uh, they said, uh, when we wake up in the morning, I can't be startled when I w- see you in the morning. <laughs> see, when I wake up. I thought that was, I, the fact that it says startled. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Milwaukee Brewers player Josh Hader, he received a standard ovation. Um, so, Pretty much, it came out last week that he had some old tweets when he was 17 years old from 2011 to 2012, where he made racist and um, homophobic comments. He said, the tweet said some stuff like, I don't give a damn, I'm a triply nigger, F my lungs, F my liver. Then he said, funny how you never see black a black person getting mauled by a shark, hashtag shark week, because they're scared of water. He also wrote in one tweet, white power, LOL, and another tweet, I hate gay people. Well, of course, this all came to light, you know, now that he is um, in the league, uh, you know, people always go back on your history. And so he made his first appearance, um, you know, on the field since those tweets came out and he received a standard ovation. Now, he he did apologize for, for the tweets, you know, when they came out. He said there's no excuse for them. He apologized to his fans and his teammates. He said there's no excuse for what, what was said. Um, I'm deeply sorry for what, what I said and what's been going on. It doesn't reflect my beliefs going on now. Now, sports fans are quick to point out the double standards and haters receiving from fans as opposed to how the NFL players who kneel during the national anthem you know when they protested how they were how they were treated. Someone tweeted, "Kneel against injustice, get booed. Uh, racial homophobic slurs, get a standing O." That was from Shannon Sharp, who's on uh, Undisputed. So, two questions: Do you think a person's mindset can change from seventeen to, I guess he's seventeen, eight years later? Do you think his mindset can change, and do you? Do you see an injustice with him receiving that standing no as opposed to the NFL players, you know, getting booed for uh, for protesting police brutality? I wouldn't call it injustice. I'll, tell you, I'll call it this. It shows you where America is. Mm-hmm. I think every time one of these things happens, it, it, it definitely shows you. I think, honestly, I think that's, that's where we are right now. I think we're in a, a spirit of, of the universe awakening us to how things really are. So mm. us walking around with masks, as a country, as people, as individuals, I think we're in times of releasing and revealing of how things really are. So we can definitely work with the truth, right? Mm-hmm. And so, anytime these things happen, 
um, and reveal more of who we are as Americans or, Amer- or as a country. Um, the fact that they will give him a standing ovation based on him being racist 17 years ago, not saying that he is now when he was 17 years old, because I do think people can change. And I do think, you know, obviously if we were all held against the mistakes we made when we were 17, right. we wouldn't have been growing. So mm-hmm. I think it's absolutely wrong to think that somebody from the age of 17 can't grow um, into a better person, a different person. So it is possible. I don't know him personally. I don't know if it has, but it is possible. But I will say this. It shows where our country is, the fact that it's being celebrated that he was racist, that those statements w- were made. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's a sad truth, but this is the truth that we've always lived in, right, as black Americans. Um, and so... I think it's, it's, it's a bit of a struggle now because in our faith and we were okay with it not being so open. Overtly, and no yeah. Races. Yeah, yeah. And and so, but now we have to deal with how things really are. And so that's just where we are. Mm-hmm. Chica? Uh, I agree with Miss Parker uh, in the sense that you can change from being an adolescent. You know, you have different experiences in life that may... Uh, alter your your way of thinking or way of being so maturity does take place however that whole standing ovation like i don't i don't get it i mean i get it but i don't get it um here we have roseanne who got fired oh wait a minute the person in charge was a black person so the black right person exactly there's a big difference uh-huh see the difference <laughs> yeah yeah this is crazy this mm-hmm. is crazy mm-hmm. but i will say this um like Ms. Parker said, now we know where we are clearly. The rose-colored glasses are gone. What are we going to do about it? It's true. We can't just keep talking about it and being upset about it because it's never going to change. There was a recent game um, where I think it was the Yankees that they had a huge sign up saying Make America Great Again at the game. And it just shows you, like, just I don't know what 45 has these people thinking this country is now we're starting to see things that we thought were hidden or we had overcome. And it's, it's very sad. It's very sad. Uh, I think what they could have done was, you know, if if they cannot appreciate that, you know, he was 17 when he made the tweets um, and he's a new, a different person today, they could have just played ball. Like nothing ever happened. You know what I mean? Not acknowledge when he came out there, just like they would normally do. You know what I mean? A standing ovation. (laughs) This is too much. Well, next topic. So, Carney B and Offset, they uh, purchased Lamborghinis over the weekend. And they took pictures of them, posted them on social media, and got a lot of back, backlash saying uh, that they leased the cars. And I guess this made Carney B so upset that she made a video. Not only did she make a video uh, discuss where she revealed the, the paper where she bought the car, but also she... Um, Posted her bank statements from where she, the money was withdrawn. Um, just let's take a look. Let's take a listen to the clip, and we'll talk about it. We get back. Yeah, we just kind of playing me like a bitch is broke. Like why? Why would you say that my car is a lease? Me and my husband, we don't we don't lease shit around here. But you know what? Since y'all try to play me, let me. You know, what I'm saying? you know, pink slip, pink slip. You know what I'm saying? And I had to cash out completely. Because I don't have a fucking license, but I don't give a fuck. If I'm going to rap about having a Lambo, I'm going to own a motherfucking Lambo. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about eating halal, driving a Lambo. I got to buy me shit because I don't like to rap about fake shit that I don't go through. So, bam. So, she was, was saying in the video that, the, you know, the reason why she proved that she bought the car is because she raps about having a Lamborghini. So, I, I don't like rapping about stuff that... I don't, I can't, don't experience. So if I'm gonna rap about having a Lamborghini, I'm gonna buy me a Lamborghini. She tweeted. She said, uh, "I'm that bitch you love to hate and watch, and I love that. Sh- I love the fact that you watch my page more than anybody else. I love that you get, I get y'all press. F and love it." She said, "A lot of people ask me uh, why I got a blue Lamborghini since they know my favorite color is red. Well, it was the only Lambo they had with the top off, and I really wanted the top off." She also put people love doubting you. Uh, then when you hit them with the receipt, it's still a problem. Suck my D. Now g- goodbye. I'm finna do a song to get y'all niggas mad. Studio. People tweeted back. Um, 
this is what this is what happens when losers with zero talent are are handed success. Uh, someone else tweeted, "Don't know why I just saw a screenshot of Carney B's bank account. I'm gonna just pretend I didn't." Someone said, "Why at Cardi B felt the need to post her bank account statement on social media? That's so effing tacky. She stayed proven sh- to people. She'll never change." Shake hash. I'm shaking my head. What are your thoughts? I, I, new money, supporting yeah. Miss Tony Braxton. New money, ratchet. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. That's just bad taste. All right. But All right. you know, that's the that's the new generation. Yeah. Miss Parker. So I I personally don't understand why she's even going back and forth with people who are not living her lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Why do they matter to you? Why mm-hmm. do you mean like? I just can't even fathom why she would go back and forth with, I don't want to say regular folks, but the day-to-day people who are working 40 hours per week, they don't understand that type of money. So why do you even why do you even feel the need to prove anything to people who are not even on your level? I just, I'm baffled. I just, I, no, or did she not know how, like, did she never, never learn how to, like, just dismiss people when she was moving? And these celebrities, why are they on social media so much? Why don't they have a social media person? Even if they don't want to be on social media, why don't they turn off their status on comments? The comments. Every social mm-hmm. media teacher has that. You can post all day long and not let them miss anything anyone has to say. So you must you must keep it on because the good things they have to say feed your ego. And then mm-hmm. the bad thing drives you crazy. So you're fighting two you're fighting two evils really, because you're feeding your ego and in the same time it's driving you nuts. And and it's just to me it's it's, it's ridiculous. All of it is. It's all it is. It's a waste of time. I agree. I think first of all, posting your bank statement on social media. Why? I wouldn't care. Even if I lease the car, what's it to you? Right. <laughs> right. Right. And those are the main ones. Yep. Mhm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think I think you know she's still young, but still you're a mother now. You gotta be more mind, mindful. You don't care what people say about you. You got you you got two Lamborghinis this weekend. You're your husband. What what's the to anybody else? You know what I mean? I think what I liked about the older days when we had celebrities, it was more of a secret of things that were going. It, you know, it was more of a mystery to it. Now it's just too much access, and people have to respond to everything. I don't like that. I don't like that. All right, well, we all know, like, last week, uh, Demi Lovato, um, she overdosed. Initially, TMZ said it was on heroin, but her camp came out and said it wasn't heroin, and they wouldn't um, say what drugs it were, you know, they were. But she's still at uh, Cedar sinai Medical Center, where she has been since last Tuesday when she o- OD'd. Um, they said the reason is because she's very, very sick. Now, sources that are supposed to be firsthand knowledge told TMZ that she's suffering extreme nausea and uh, high fever, among other things. They're told that these are all complications to the overdose. Now, Demi would not tell TMZ, even though when they found her, she was unresponsive, but they revived her. And they said they had to give her something called Narcane, which is a um, drug that um, is an antidote to opioid OD. She wouldn't tell what drug or drug she used, um, but a, apparently it was an op- opioid because of the drug they used to re- uh, reverse it. Now, doctors have not decided when they're going to release her from the hospital, but they said she's under the care of the medical experts and expect to make a full recovery. They also don't know whether or not she'll be going to a re- uh, rehab facility when she's released, but people around her want her to go. But Because she, apparently she's been on the down, downhill side for months. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be up to her. What are your thoughts on her overdose? And um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Because you know she's been very public about her drug use in the past, and apparently she had been clean for six years, and um, and then you know she reverted back. What are your thoughts? I don't know if I have a thought. I just hope the girl gets better. You know, mm-hmm. I, whatever it was, obviously it wasn't anything that is healthy, and she's not in a healthy space. Right. So I don't think it matters what it is or. Um, you know, how long she's been addicted. The fact that she's almost almost died. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she's in my my thoughts and prayers. Her family, and you know, I just hope she gets better. Obviously, she's going to have to get some 
some real people around her who's able to tell the truth. Um, it's not just her, though. This young, this young celebrity culture is very reckless. And, and it may have been that way with older celebrities when they were young, but we didn't know about it. Right, it wasn't yeah. As, as, uh, the news wasn't as, um, as, as um, out there mm -hmm. for their lifestyles. Mm -hmm. But I know this, this celebrity culture today um, seems very reckless. But imagine being young and not having anyone ever around you to say no. You can just do and have whatever you want. Um, it's, it's really killing these kids, and everybody's not ready for film, especially keep people at that age. Um, you know, when it shows up unexpectedly and you have access to all of these things, it's, it's a very um, probably dangerous place to, to, place to live in. Um, so, you know, I'm just hoping that she gets better. It's not just her, though. A lot of these young rappers are addicted to all kinds of things. One of the rappers just shot himself on social media twice. Yeah. And was crying, mm -hmm. not because of the pain of, the, of shooting himself, but because he's in so much emotional pain. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. He literally shot himself while he was crying and didn't even flinch mm. from the pain of the shot. Mm -hmm. That's how much pain you are in emotionally to not even feel physical pain. Um, so it's just, it's just all really scary and it's just for them and it's, it's sad to see. You know, I talk about emotional trauma a lot. I think not only celebrities, but day-to-day -day people, we struggle with the trauma and, and, and mental health and, um, and, and and depression and anxiety. And all those things are, are part of the healing process. Um, but imagine being in the public eye and having access to things that are able to help you through those things faster but not help you. Yeah. And, and not, not in the most healthy way. So um, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad to see. But, no, I agree. Chica? Uh, just pray for that young lady. Um, it seems like every so often we have a cycle of young celebrities that, you know, go down this path. And I understand that um, if you're not aware of who you are when you come into the industry, it will consume you and it will devour you. And That's true. Especially if you do not have people around you that keep you grounded. It will consume you completely. Well, apparently she had a sober coach who she had been working with, you know, in her sobriety, but she fired him recently and she fired her manager and she fired a lot of people around her. So I just hope, you know, it just goes to show you, you know, that addiction is a powerful thing. Um, you know, she, again, she was six years clean. There have been people who've been 20, like I think Robin Williams, he was uh, 25 years clean from alcoholism. And, you know, it's just one of those things that you have to constantly work on and constantly have those right people in your corner that can talk to you and you listen to, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, we're definitely praying for her because she's been very outspoken. She's helped a lot of people with her story. So, um, you know, continue to come back and, and do it again. Do it again. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with more hot topics right back after this. Until the sunlight Can't believe I had you going all night A touch here Pulled hair Back it up Right there Girl, you know you did some things to me slowly Got me thinking I should call you my shorty You the type that I could bring around the homies Down for me, I ain't never gotta worry Worry Tease me Kiss me Squeeze me Tell me that you miss me Tell me you and I are meant to be Forever you and I T-Y Cause I'm that guy Love at first sight when you caught my eye Never do I ever wanna make you cry Baby be mine and we'll fly so high So high Wedding gown, house on the hill, 
queen with a crown Oh girl, you know that you are my everything Since you've been in my life, ain't been the same I need ya, I want ya, wanna be there for you Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. 
Why well, play you in a C4? Can't cap in. Like I said before, hungry line blocking. You leave it, another scam man will pop it. Grab it, squeeze it, with dry fist. That it time, you will be trying how to catch it. You know you're missing a casa by the bed tape. You fix it, oh fire, trying how to catch it. Then you won't speak serious now until they get it. Pretty girl, let me take you out of dinner. I got a cheddar, forgive me, I was a sinner. Gonna be better from January down to December. Take trips, go to spots even in the winter. So sexy, gorgeous, and beautiful. Everything. That we do is memorable. I'm feeling you from your head down to your toes. Don't have to speak on it, I'm gonna show. Anytime she walking, yeah. the boy them be watching. Yeah. Anytime she walking, yeah. the boy them be jacking. Yeah. Baby girl, you temptation. Anytime you turn girl, you confusion. Yo, what up, y'all? It's Gary L. Gray, and you are listening to the Stephen. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, Instagram, and, of course, our official website, thestephennightshow.com. We're also on iTunes, iHeartRadio. Uh, we're also now on Spotify. Uh, this is something recent. YouTube. Just go to our website, thestephennightshow.com, and uh, find out more about where you can listen to us. All right, so we have a few more hot topics here. So Monique is standing by uh, Roseanne Barr, who, you know, she um, had made the racist tweets about uh, White House advisor Valerie Jarrett and called her ape. She said, my sister made a mistake and said something I know that she wishes she could take back. But what I would ask is that you don't throw her away. Now, apparently what she was what she's referring to is she said that, um, I guess years ago, her and Roseanne had a conversation off the, off the uh, record and she really gave her some good advice or they had a real deep conversation. So she's thinking that she, although that she knows that what Roseanne said was wrong, you know, it was a mistake. So someone tweeted um, Mo and said, I'm not with you on this one, Aunt uh, Monique. Roseanne is a bigot. And you may not feel that way about her, but I guarantee you that she doesn't feel the way about you. I pray that you see the truth about Roseanne. Monique came back and said, hey, uh, Jasmine, see, okay, see when there is no cameras rolling, it was just me and that sister. She shared some things with me as a sister. I can't forget that conversation. And thanks for loving me through, even even though we disagree, real sisterhood. She also think she also told another fan that she wouldn't be so quick to toss people out, which included her. She said the person tweeted, "I think there's a lot of causes that we could be standing up for. Roseanne Barr shouldn't be one of them. There are a lot of people who are hiding behind the political affiliations uh, to make racist comments. And out of all the things that you could speak out about, you choose this." Monique wrote back, "When you say girl by, how does that help sisterhood?" Never would I throw you away. What are the younger sisters saying? When are you ready to toss toss us out? Thanks for having the conversation. What are your thoughts? She's crazy. 
<laughs> but I always, I mean, I was always thought she, she had, you know, obviously it's a little off. Um, <laughs> but, you know, people are, are, are people are um, able to or should be able to support whoever they want to support. But she's doing it at the cost of her own support. So people who have been standing behind her this whole time and thinking that she, you know, may have had a point and she was standing up for herself. A lot of those people are no longer standing behind her. So every time we make a choice, there's a consequence to it. We don't get to choose if it's good or bad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We get, to make, we get to make a choice. Every day of our lives, in every situation, we make choices. And we don't get to choose the consequences, good or bad. So she made her choice and she spoke her, you know, her truth. And if that's how she feels, it's fine. But those fans get the choice now, too. Whether or not they're going to stand by her or not. And a lot of them are not. So the fan base, the little fan base that she did have left, they're not standing by her anymore. That's the choice she made, and that's the choice they're making. It's all about choices. Yeah. Chica? So, I heard Monique's um, interview on that, and I and I do agree with her about uh, the statement that she made about some people are um, raised into racism to a degree. Like there are certain words that you grow up saying, certain words that are in your family vocabulary that become a part of yours, but it doesn't necessarily make you racist. It's a learned behavior. And I, I, I believe that to a certain degree because I do have family members that talk a certain way because that was their upbringing, but in their heart, that's not how they really feel. And they have to work at being politically correct because those are the words that they grew up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With that being said, um, like Ms. Parker said, uh, Monique is entitled to her choice, um, and I was a Roseanne fan. I love Roseanne. However, the Roseanne that I love and the Roseanne that I want to continue to support would not have done anything like that. And then Monique can have a relationship with, with Roseanne, and they've had a private moment where that touched her. What Roseanne did touched me in a certain way, which makes me not want to connect that way. So maybe they can get together and create art. Maybe... Maybe something can happen from that. Maybe they should write a movie and, and incorporate that story into something. I don't know. Do something positive with it since y'all love each other. But that's our choice. <laughs> well said. All right, our last topic. So the world was shocked last week when Faith Evans and Stevie J got married. Um, but they're they're talking about uh, you know starting a family together. So there's still much shock over the out. Out of nowhere, marriage with Faith Evans and Stevie J. Um, but they, they plan on taking things to the next level. So TMZ, they did an interview with TMZ um, talking about starting their own family. And it was like a two-minute long video. And the interviewer was asking questions and asked, um, you know, do they plan on having children? And Faith said that she's still fertile. And, we, and she said, we definitely know Stevie J is. And he ain't shooting blanks. So... What are your thoughts on Stevie J and Faith? Uh, well, Faith, let me just say, she's a friend of our show. She's been on here three times. We love her to death. Um, I've met her. Great woman. I know Chica knows her. What are your thoughts on Faith Evans and Stevie J uh, getting married and starting a family? I think I'll pass on this one. Let Chica have it. I want everyone to be happy. I really do. Faith, that's my homie. I love her dearly. I just wouldn't have thought that that would have been a choice, but that's your homie. I know that they've been friends for years, and I know that there is love there. Um, marriage, I, I guess, uh, whatever makes you happy. I just would that, that just I would never have thought mm -hmm. that, but whatever makes you happy. Yeah. They they say this is not a publicity stunt. Um, I saw an interview of her over the weekend, and she said that um, they dated years ago, but she didn't think he was ready. They started working together on this project. They already had the date release for the single in the video. Um, and I guess they had kind of reconnected in the studio, and but they didn't expect to be married. They shot the video back in April. They, they, they had talked about getting married, but they didn't expect to actually get married. Um, this soon, but they, they say why not? And so they're saying this is real. The only thing is that I did see the TMT video, and I don't like to speculate about anybody, but some people look a little under the influence, 
and I was reading the comments on um, line because someone had posted a video. I think it was the Shade Room, and uh, they are calling them the 2018 Whitney and Bobby, which hope, definitely hope is not the case. <laughs> it's not the case um, if you know there's drug use involved, but. We wish them the best, and you know they said this is what they're doing, and they they they're not worried about any the haters or not naysayers. So, just uh, well, let me let me just say this to Mr. Stevie J: You can't be doing that foolery with my girl. First right, of all, right, the gang of us that will come get you. Secondly, she ain't about that life. She's not having that. You right. know her. Right, exactly. Well, wish them all the best, Miss Parker Chike. Thank you so much for hot topic, Chick. I'll see you in movie reviews. Have a great week. Sure. All right, and we'll be right back after. We'll be right back after this. Your love is showing me my past. My heart belongs in your grass. I only see you underneath your life. Can't survive without your kiss My life dripping from your lips I'm nowhere if I'm not by your side It feels like time slows down And every breath is getting longer My heart sink into the ground And every weakness is getting stronger And as I'm falling I can feel you Lift me up underneath your wings And just every touch How you take my love and bring it back to life You bring it back to life Feel your fire burn underneath my skin And it's every touch How you take my love and bring it back to life You bring it back to life And I'm breathing in every single sound you make I can feel your words all in the air With your voice making my heart beat your soul is all I see It's like the rest of the world is not there It feels like time slows down And every breath is getting longer I feel my heart sink into the ground Every weakness is getting stronger And as I'm falling I can feel you Lift me up underneath your wings And it's every touch How you take my love and bring it back to life You bring it back to life I feel your fire burn underneath my skin And it's every touch How you take my love and bring it Back to life You bring it back to life And as I'm falling down I feel you lift me up Underneath your wings And just every touch How you take my love And bring it back to life You bring it back to life I feel your fire burn Underneath my skin And just every touch How you take my love And bring it back to life you bring it back to
living this way. That's why I'm packing my suitcase. I'm only taking what I need. The world is waiting for me. I won't sit home any longer. Oh, no. Such a job dying of hunger. And I should be making a difference. I know I'm telling the truth. Wasted potential is the death of many. In this planet of dead men who live. Cause the world. To my suitcase, I'm gonna make a difference. Not gonna walk in ignorance, make the world listen. I'ma leave an imprint. Yes, they gon' know I'm here. The world is gonna yeah, be my yeah. stage. And when I'm long gone, they, they gon' talk about me. They gon' read about me. I'm, I'm gonna leave a legacy, a legacy. Yes, you and me gon' make history. Wasted potential is the death of me. This planet of dead men who live Cause their words live on Though they've been long gone Yes, I know I wanna be like me I've got a place to be Come on, I'm just stuck in the desert Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Now, our next guest is a former child star who appeared in shows such as The Cosby Show and Even Stevens. He also starred alongside uh, Oscar Award winning actress and comedian Monique in the film Blackbird. When tonight he joins us, please help me welcome the very talented Gary Leroy Gray. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. How you guys doing? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I know you're a busy man, so thank you for taking time out your schedule to join us tonight. 
Oh man, I appreciate you guys definitely for for having me, man. It's a it's a pleasure. Most definitely, most definitely. All right, so let's talk about it. Most of us uh, got to know you from the Cosby Show when you played Nelson. Do you remember anything from those early days? Uh, it's funny. I tell people this all the time. Like, I remember those days very vividly, and then everything after that is a blur. <laughs> like, if you ask me, if you ask me, like, what what was going on between the ages of, like, 6 and 12, I couldn't tell you. But, yeah. man, I, like, from, from 3 to, to, to 5, which is the, the ages that I was on, on the Cosby show, I remember it very vividly. I remember being in New York. I remember being on set. I remember all the things that I learned there. Um, and I, I think that's just kind of a testament to the experience, you know, and yeah. what, what it was supposed to mean to me, you know what I mean? So, uh, no, I I loved it. I loved doing that, especially at that age. It was, you know, I mean, you know, you're three three to five. I mean, yeah. You're usually not in New York, you know, on a set. So uh, I, I'm still very, very thankful that that's how my career started. Most definitely. definitely. And so you, um, do you keep in touch with the cast members? to this day uh some some people yeah definitely um i see malcolm quite a bit okay. um you know here and there you know just in passing in la uh i've seen you know tempest um mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit um you know it, it, it's it varies um yeah. i am very close with miss felicia um oh yeah i attended yeah, I attended a dance school at her sister's um, academy, Debbie Allen. Yes. Uh, I was there for a couple of years, so I, I'm, you know, really close with Miss Felicia. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's like a she's like an uh, aunt to me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that's a great one to have, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, obviously, uh, Bill Cosby, um, who I heard was amazing to the, especially the, the child stars on set he was like a father figure on set and and didn't put up with yeah. you know craziness but you know other stuff has come out you know in recent years what are your thoughts when you think of the person that you knew then to which you're you know even though you're a little you know you're a kid but to what you hear now yeah. what's coming out what are your thoughts on all that you know it's a it's a slippery slope i mean you don't you never want to you know have something like that come about of mm-hmm. somebody that you you know, you grew to to respect and to love and all of that kind of thing. Um, you know, I I look at it this way. Um, it really sucks to say this, but I mean, we we're obviously seeing evidence that yeah. you know men weren't you know completely the best. You know, aren't completely the best. I don't want to say weren't like it. You know, isn't ongoing. But um, you know, obviously there were ways that men did. You know, um, uh, things back then, and uh, I feel like. Um, I feel like Bill got put in a compromising position, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, he just didn't make the right decisions, you know, at that point, you know, you gotta, I, and I'll be very candid, you know, I, I think we would be naive to think that he was like the ringleader of, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> this all, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, there are probably stars that are a lot, you know, higher up and richer and probably whiter, mm-hmm. uh, you well, know, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and, and doing those things and may or may not have taught him how to do those things. And right. so um, I look at it as uh, it's unfortunate that he made those decisions, um, you know, but I think that uh, it's very clear a a level of influence was was had you know in in these things and right. um i just know that the man that i knew um you know right it, exactly this was the separate life that he led he hit it very well yeah but in my eyes it was something that it seemed like he got to a certain point in his career where he was on top of the world and the people who are up there said hey like let me show you something and mm-hmm. you know and that's that's just how those the, those circles run, and uh, I, again, it's the best word I can look to say is unfortunate. I, yeah, you know, I hope yeah. I hope he has peace. You know what I mean? And I, I hope he finds the necessary healing he needs to not be that person. Because um, I don't wish bad on anybody. Exactly. Um, but yeah. it's that, you know there were there were there are victims involved, and you have to you have to acknowledge that. So, right. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you know. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Do you think, you know, because for a lot of us, you know, black Americans and blacks over the world, really, you know, the Cosby show was the first positive uh, black family that we saw on TV, especially the parents were not in poverty. You know what I mean? Um, and so yeah. they set that 
you know, that we were all proud of that. And, you know, I mean, I bought the box set of it. Do you think that right. because of this scandal, it will taint the legacy of Bill Cosby? And do you, or, and do you think it will taint the legacy of the Cosby show? Well, I mean, it's very clear it is it is tainting it. Um, and, I mean, the one word that you can look at that and say is that, you know, it's someone who is that prevalent in the African-American community mm-hmm. as far as forward movement and progress of the community. Yeah. It's going to taint. And, and, and it wouldn't it wouldn't matter whether it was worthy of it being tainted or not. You know what I mean? It's right. just because of the position he was in, he's going to find that resistance. He's going to find people who are hell-bent on, you know, trying to make sure that he has, you know, he has to, you know, have everything, all of his accomplishments stripped away. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the, one of, I won't even say one of those, the biggest accomplishment, I believe, in his career and his life was the Cosby show. And of course, that's going to be the first thing that's attacked. Oh, look, look at your, look at your hero. He's not the hero. Exactly. And they start taking it from networks and stuff. So, I feel like, uh, yeah, it's happening. We see it. I mean, obviously, when it comes to him, his decisions will taint his legacy because those are his decisions. And his accomplishments, you would think that sometimes with certain people, it shouldn't touch said accomplishments. But because of, again, the position he was in and who he is, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're in the, uh, the again. The word is unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunate, it really is. Well, you, you know, you're in the industry, so you know a lot of times, you know, we as fans, we fall in love with a facade or an image of a celebrity, and we think that's who they are night and day. Um, what have you learned about that in terms of you know meeting certain celebrities? Um, have have you met someone that you thought they were some way prior to meeting them, and then you met them and you're like, oh, okay, this person's not at all who I thought. Um, a lot. I would say a lot of actors are. You mm-hmm. know, um, I think it's just in our nature to not really be who you thought we were. Right. You know, I mean, that's like, that's exactly why we do what we do. You know, yeah. it's to make you think I am not who I who I actually am. That's my job, and so I find it very natural to meet you know people who you know i haven't met and and say wow like that's that i i didn't think you were gonna be that way yeah, it almost yeah. happens all the time you yeah. know? so uh, i think that's just kind of our nature of our profession do you think that we should be able that we as the public should separate the person from the art do you think that should be done I would I wouldn't say not ne- not necessarily because I mean there are a lot of actors that live in their truth and their career speaks to that mm-hmm. and that's all well and fine I think that there's differences in how each actor approaches his career and what roles he chooses and how he chooses to dive in said roles um, so I think that as as fans or as the public is concerned I think you're supposed to just kind of go into it with an open mind mm. don't you know don't be surprised or taken aback that he might be different just be accepting and uh and really understand that most actors are our our minds and and personalities are fragmented because of what we do right you know and so just be understanding that you may get you know a version of this person that you just did not expect you know and i think of it you know even from a you know a low level like even like people that work nine to five you may act one way at work you're not gonna act on the weekend with your friends you know what i mean so it's like exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and yeah. that's with that's without being told to be another exactly. person for most of most exactly. of your job. You know what I mean? So yeah. like when you kind of get into that mode, actors that have been doing it for you know twenty, thirty years, I'm so used to being someone else that when I meet you know someone and I have to be me you know sometimes I don't even know what that looks like you know yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's kind of one of those things you know um, uh, and I, I just ask that people be mindful of that um, a lot of times people kind of expect everybody to be on at all times and I'm also one of those people where I don't like to shy away from meeting people you know or, or signing autographs or taking pictures and none of that because it's part of my job right. you know what I mean but yeah. at the same time we all are human you know and there mm-hmm. could be days where I don't mood. necessarily feel like it, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but that's just, that's just what it is. And I just, you know, when people kind of get it, it, it works. It, it, yeah. it, it all feels from <laughs> I heard that makes a lot of sense. So you mentioned obviously Cosby show, even Steven you also appeared on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Family Matters, Living Single, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
How did it all start for you? Man, I did the I did the I did the nineties sitcom. You did. Cool, right. <laughs> all the good ones too. All the good ones. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even really like realize that, you know. But um oh man, I love I love doing all those all those uh all those projects I, yeah. I from even Steve. Yeah, especially the especially the sitcoms. Uh, I mean Right now, sitcoms are kind of a lost art. So I was, I'm just super thankful that I mm-hmm. got to experience that type of set. Right. And I, like, it's crazy to think, like, man, there are gonna be actors, you know, probably 20 years from now that may never even know what it is to be on a sitcom set. Right. You know, right. Sitcoms are dying, you know. But I mean, I remember back in the day, that's all that that that's all, all they was. Had. Oh you know, my we, gosh! Yeah. Right. We had a block of time on Fridays, mm-hmm. you know, to say, hey. This is legit two hours yep. of sitcoms like yep. you know um you know so i just feel like it's crazy to think that you know the way the industry is moving we're all into episodics and we're all into streaming and all of that kind of thing and the room for sitcoms is dwindling it's like man i'm so thankful that i was you know a part of that you know right. part of that golden age yeah yeah well you're from from south side chicago grew up in south side chicago um how did you get your start in acting uh, I actually in Chicago was doing a lot of print modeling when I was a toddler, and okay. um, I was entered in competitions and you know left and right, and I eventually got into actually you know runway modeling. And, okay. Um, the thing is, yeah, the thing is with professional runway modeling, the room for toddlers is pretty much zero. You know, so if you are in it, you're probably the only you know one of five toddlers that are actually walking the runway. So, <laughs> right. Like, I was really. Yeah, I was really blessed to 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 kind of get into that world at that age, and uh, I was at a fashion show in New York, and one of the producers from the Cosby Show was a producer of the fashion show as well, and they plucked me out and was like, "Hey, we want the the twins to grow up, and you know we're looking for toddlers, and we'd love for you to come in and meet with Bill." And my mom, she was there, and she was just like, "Ah." okay but she didn't believe it so we just moved back to chicago right <laughs> and so um uh i believe it was like i don't know maybe a week later or so we get a phone call and it's that producer and bill on the line and they were like nope we're serious we need you to fly out and the rest as they say is history so yep that was it <laughs> well and i and i've read that your mother kept you grounded like she didn't let you out there while now you know oh, she, yeah. yeah yeah talk talk about I it i mean now i mean now listen to me like now I'm, <laughs> i don't know I, I i would say i probably when it comes to being grounded i might be one of the most grounded actors i yeah. i just i i it's not physically like legit physically i can't not work mm. so i always hope like a job you know and for me it's important to to know how that feels and to know what it feels like to like legit day in and day out work for your money yeah um and not wait for it because essentially that's what we as actors we wait for our money exactly that's why we don't have to anymore, you mm-hmm. know and those those years can 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 be spaced out there could be like when you get to that point that's not to say that you necessarily will stay at that point you know what i mean so yeah. really yeah really all of our and that goes for big actors too there's there's big actors who were making 20 million and then they aren't anymore and mm-hmm. you know now it's like hey well now i have to yeah you know, i can't buy a job you know right so for me it's important to really know that this job or this passion is fleeting and we're only in it for as long as really the audience allows us to be and i take that very seriously so um yeah man I'm, I, I was on even stevens working working at a candy store you know what i mean yeah. so for yeah. me that's you know that's what it's about it's about you know knowing that you gotta you gotta get your hands dirty no matter what so um i kept i was kept grounded i'm from a blue collar family most of the men in my family are law enforcement mm-hmm. um and most of the women in my family work for the state so i was already kind of like a, a black sheep <laughs> like, right, like, right. You wanna act like so so they they knew that that was necessary you know for me because i wasn't even around it you know my whole family that has nothing to do with entertainment so they knew that once i got into it it was important to keep my mind you know like okay don't stray because you see all this you know all these lights and stuff and it was like yeah i i can do that i can i can i can still stay where i'm at and still be in this world and it's worked for me for 31 years so yeah, I'm most not definitely. about to stop <laughs> most definitely what are your thoughts on like reality stars you know a lot, reality TV is huge right now you know love and hip hop oh, of no. every city you really, you really 
trying to give me to go there, man. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm just saying, just be prepared for real answers. Yeah, saying, no, listen. But, because, you know, you think about some people who have been doing it for years, people who study their craft, you know, hours and hours of, yeah. uh, you know, just training. And then a reality yeah. star becomes popular on the show, and then they're being offered roles, or they're getting advantages that, you know, people who grew up in this and trained in this may be overlooked. I remember I interviewed, um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he's on The Bold and the Beautiful. I interviewed him, and he said that, he's lost roles because his social media numbers weren't popping. Like, you know, he's not big on social media. And so he's lost roles to people who weren't as talented or weren't even as uh, accomplished, but because they had all these followers, they were getting the gigs. What are your thoughts on all that? Yeah. Uh, well, I think that there, there's, there's so many different types of quote unquote reality stars. Now right. Because reality doesn't just mean reality shows anymore yeah we have streaming and we have the youtubes and the and the twitch and you know all of that kind of thing man i sounded old just now i just called it the twitch (laughs) Uh, but but, uh but you know when it comes to that whole grouping i feel certain avenues are 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 a little bit different like the twitch for example um I know most gaming streamers really do work. You mm-hmm. know, they work it almost to the same tune that most actors work for their for their roles and things like that. Um, uh, and, and it's like their roles in the gaming community are a lot different. You know, for you know, like taking it and comparing it to an actor's path. But essentially, they're trying to achieve the same thing. I'm 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 doing the groundwork so that I can achieve a level of notoriety in my field. And by then doing that, I am, you know, I'm putting myself on camera and I'm working and I'm trying to be funny. I'm, you know, I'm trying to, you know, make things accessible for viewers. All of that is work. Um, yeah. And, you know, when it comes to like YouTube and stuff like that, it's work to a certain extent. Now, with YouTube, I kind of have a little bit of a gripe because with Twitch, it's very much a community. It's a, it's, it's a very clear goal. It's like, yo, we're going to play video games. We're going to be good at it. We're right. going to hope that you think we're fun and likable. And boom. And to me, I think that's respectable. However, I think YouTube has created, specifically YouTube, YouTube has created this whole notion that as long as I place myself in front of a camera, mm-hmm. I can get people watch yeah and that's where my gripe comes with you know obviously reality tv i I don't necessarily have gripes with them because it's not like they are the ones seeking out producers and saying please film me producers are going and saying i need a show about you know five rappers right you know their girlfriends Mm -hmm. together and let's call these guys so it's not their fault they just were put in a situation and they made the best of it so i'm not going to get into that but when it comes to YouTube, I just see that influx of people who are just like, let me throw myself in front of a camera and do something, and hopefully it sticks and I'll become popular. Yeah. And I think the gripe that I have with that is I've seen people who originally were actors. Mm. And then they said, this isn't working. Let me just become a YouTube person. Right, and a character. And yeah. To me, yeah. And to me, uh, that just hurts. It really does hurt. And it's and it's because, hey, you didn't take YouTube seriously. It's almost like I'm also defending YouTube, which is right, like, no, right. no, no. It's, there are people who really work for that type of that type of uh, notoriety. Mm-hmm. And but when, you're, when you do YouTube as a fallback or YouTube as a well, um, I'm not as popular as I want to be, so let me just make up something. To, Desperation to, to kind of on- yeah. You know, and mm. like that, to me, I don't agree with. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I get it. Don't don't get me wrong. I get it. And it's like, yo, if you're successful, congrats. And you, you made it the way you made it. And I can't right. be mad at that. However, if, if you're asking my thoughts, I just feel like when it comes to the way you approach being, you know, a streaming slash reality star, it says a lot. You know, yeah. it says a lot about what you're really trying to get out of being seen. Um, and that's to me the key. So I hear that. I hear that. Well, another like we mentioned uh, that you worked with um, Monique, uh, Oscar winner Monique yeah. and Blackbird. And um, I read the interview. You said that she was like a mother figure on set. She was hilarious. She was looking out for everyone. When you see um, some of her recent controversy of you know just speak 
speaking of some of the issues, um, especially women of color, um, actress women of color mm -hmm. experience and the way she went about doing it. What were your thoughts on that? Uh, so it's really bad. I, you know, Mo Miss Monique, she she is, uh, you know, such a great mind, such a mm -hmm. great heart. Yeah. On set, you know, just speaking to her, and she doesn't have an ill bone in her body for mm -hmm. anybody. And to see that people were trying to peg her to be this trouble starter, and you know, and and, and it just really sucked because it's like, wow, because because a black woman speaks up and tries to stand her ground, now she's problematic. And right. We're really what's crazy to me was you know the African American community was really saying a lot of this and it's like wow like um, you know when it came to what she was saying about Netflix I mean the proof was in the pudding you know? right. and, and that's what really made me laugh was like I was like wow like people are really going hard but mm -hmm. it's not like she isn't providing receipts you right know? It's exactly. like, I can understand if it was she saying she's saying it was like yeah Netflix but she's putting out emails she's 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 tweeting her followers and saying well look at this text thread yeah. and it's like well you know, like, what are, now what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to still fight against her? Or are you supposed to sit there and look at the evidence and say, man, my bad, queen, like, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and retract my statement. Right. And to me, the fact that people are still not doing that just shows that when a woman, and I honestly, I'm not even going to say black woman, when a, when a woman decides that she wants to take a position and, and stand for something, it's such a threat to when, it, especially the industry, and I, I just I I need to see that change uh, because I, it it's going to get to the point where I don't want to be part of the industry that mm -hmm. says that, you know. So, right, right. Um, I, I feel like in her position, she did the right thing, and um, she, her career is going to suffer, you know, and that's just the reality of it. But I think that to have that heart and to say, well, I did the right thing. I know that's what she's thinking. You know, right. I spent enough time with her to know that she she's she has her peace and she's not bothered. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that's just her spirit, yeah. and I love that. So uh, she's gonna be all right. You know? Right? <laughs> yeah. So cool. Yeah. I think I think why what took a lot of the black community away uh, or took them back was when she the thing she said about Oprah, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels. You know, especially Oprah, of mm -hmm. all people. I think that's what it was. But because what she did say about Netflix was exactly true. I think it was just the way that she said it. You know what I mean? The her her the way she messaged it. You know, especially bashing and, Oprah and, and, Winfrey. You know, obviously, yeah. Right. Obviously, you know, tact is a thing. You know, right. tact is very much a thing, and approach is a thing. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And I. I don't even like to get into those type of discussions simply right. because yeah. we're not we're not we're not worried about anybody else's tax, exactly. you know, especially when it comes to how 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 their skin is colored. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting here and going, you know, worried about you know the next actress and going saying, hey, well, they could have handled that situation a little bit better. Nobody does. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and that's the thing is that like I looked at that and that's your instinct. Your instinct is to say, yeah, damn, I'm like that. That's a little, that's a little messed right, up. You right. know? Yeah. But, um, however, when I took, when I stepped out of that situation and I, I made myself look at the whole, I said, I'm not even gonna get into that. Yeah. It's petty. It's petty to yeah. go into her and say, well, you should have, you should have kept this under wraps and you should have went to Oprah directly or you should have went to Lee directly. Mm -hmm. That's all semantics at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? A, her, a woman's career is now in jeopardy. So the way that she went about, you know, defending and standing her ground now doesn't even matter to me. So that's like true. that's how I look at it. All right. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> well, tell us about live from the couch podcast. Tell us about that. Oh man, <laughs> I, I I mean it's funny because I have always wanted to do radio. Always, okay. Always, always. And um. Uh, for a very long time, people were telling me that I should start streaming or have like a YouTube channel. And that just, I mean, I, and I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't think people wanted to watch me every week. I just, for me, like, I was like, I was like, if it's not on a show with someone else, I just don't believe, I don't, I don't want to dedicate my time to believing that people will tune in to me every week if I have my own show. So I just didn't really do it. I didn't do a YouTube thing or, or even a podcast. And I, um, I live with a, a really a really cool guy, Michael Perkins. Uh, you probably know him as Kofi on Hardball. It was a movie oh, with yeah. Keanu Reeves and okay. Diane Lane about, yeah, inner city baseball kids. He played Kofi, mm -hmm. the, the main main character so me and him were really cool been uh roommates for a very long time 
and he he actually was doing his you know his own thing with the podcast, and then he had me on as a guest, and like legit, we're sitting there. He's like, this is this this really flows very well, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I know. So we just kind of we kind of just said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and just uh, I'll just become part of the podcast. So that's what happened. That's how it happened, and I love it, man. It's it's a cool outlet to talk about you know the world every every week with people that I love, and um, you know I I just think that uh I. It's a, it's a different avenue for me, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. kind of, it's, 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 I don't want to say it's scary, but, you know, I'm very much a, a, a babe in the woods, you know, in this sense, and it feels good to, to kind of not know, you know, what you're doing sometimes. So exactly. kind of, that's the moment mm-hmm. I'm in, and it, it feels good because you can grow that way, so. I hear I that. that. people like it. <laughs> and where can we listen to uh, it? Yeah. Where can we listen to it? Uh, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. So we're on SoundCloud, and it's uh, it's a legit live. It's LFTC podcast. So if you if you just search on SoundCloud live from the couch, spelled the traditional way, it'll pop right up. It's the only one you know that'll right. pop up. And then you know on Twitter, I believe we're LFTC underscore podcast, and on Instagram we're just LFTC podcast. So and, go ahead, follow, and keep up to date. It's every uh, episode drops every Friday. And I will say I listen to it on an Apple podcast, so he didn't tell y'all that, but you can listen to it on there right, too. Yes, we are, <laughs> we are also on Apple Podcasts. Right. I keep forgetting because we're on Apple and we're also on, I believe, Google Play. Okay. Yeah. We're just working on Spotify. Yeah, okay. we're working on Spotify. Okay. Yep. Well, congrats on that. So what are you working on now outside the podcast? Oh man, <laughs> what am I not working on, man? I'm, this, I told myself this year I wasn't gonna rest. So like legit, I've been trying to push myself. I've been doing a lot of producing lately. Okay, um, I, I have a startup. I will say a startup, a startup production company. I'm looking to take on you know some shorts and things like that to just get my feet wet. Um, but I do have some projects in the works with there. Um, not, not ones that I can talk about quite yet. Okay. Um, but, uh, but I do, um, I am working on something that I, I I'm working on a, a poetry EP. Um, I'm kind of coming, coming out of retirement in a sense, because I, I used to write a lot and I used to, um, do spoken word a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. but uh, I fell out, yeah, I kind of just stopped a little bit and I've been writing, uh, quite a bit lately. Uh, and so I just made it up in my mind. I want to do I want to do a poetry EP, and I just kind of want to put it out just for me. It's not you know not to start to become a spoken word artist or anything like that. It's just something I feel like I need to say. Stuff I feel like I need to say is stuff I feel like people may want to hear. So um, been working on that, and that's very close to uh, to really getting out there. Um, and I'm also writing a novel. Yeah, I'm writing a novel, uh, a fiction. Okay. Novel fiction, and yeah, it's just uh, that's also very different because I'm used to writing screenplays, and um, you know, uh, it's been a very interesting journey, kind of writing something in that way. And um, but it's really liberating and really cool to kind of just let your mind run. And exactly. You can describe everything. And screen writing screenplays is very <laughs> direct, and it's very you know what I mean. It's very yeah, limited because yeah. you have a time. To exactly. Go under and all that. But now it's like man, I can just let my mind run. So it's been fun. So pretty much, you're telling us fans of you have we have a lot to look forward to in the in the future. Oh yeah, I, I'm also yeah, I'm also filming later this this uh, this this year. Uh, I just finished a vi- man. I can't wait to talk about this project. Man, I, I like legit when I finally am able to talk about this project, I'm gonna I jump for joy. I just finished a project. Okay, it's for me. I, I'll say for me personally. Um, it is one of the biggest things that I've ever done. Okay. Um, okay. And it's just, just personally to me, um, I will say to the general public, it might not seem as big <laughs> as it does to me, but something that's very close to my heart, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of it and part of that that world. So, like, for me, uh, I'm, I'm just really excited and really excited to see what could come of it. And, uh, yeah, so that will be hopefully later out later this year uh, i i can't i'm at the liberty of right. <laughs> the company <laughs> yeah, to say, but um but yeah man it's it's just really cool and um again i can't wait for y'all to to see it and uh yeah i got uh, so much stuff man i'm 
It sounds I, like unfortunately it. I can't talk about a lot of it though. Like this That's is one right. of the first times in my life I get to be like, yo, this project is coming. Uh -huh. I think that that means that there's a transitional period and that means that these projects are a, a step above what I'm used to and I I can't I can't be mad at that. So. Well, we'll definitely we'll definitely be watching and listening and reading and everything you have covered. Tell everyone where they can keep up with you on social media and your website or in, where, what's the best way to keep up with everything you have going on? Man, I'm always I'm always on Twitter. I got a lot of stuff to say. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Gary L. Gray on pretty much everything. If you're on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, uh, G A R Y the letter L and G R A Y same letters. So Gary L. Gray, hit me up. I run my I run my social media. I I, I get a lot obviously of you know the uh, uh, inboxes and DMs and all yeah, that. Yeah. But I try to respond. Like I really do try okay. to respond. Yeah. So if you if you have questions i get a lot of people who ask me things questions about acting people who move out to la and just want advice i honestly when i have time i look at that stuff y'all so if you know if you think somebody else is running my accounts so you think i won't see anything trust me i do it, it's just sometimes i can't respond because of time but i i look at everything you know so that definitely definitely know that um and as long as i have the time y'all y'all will get it so yeah don't be shy <laughs> all right well, listen, man. Also, thank you. Don't say the crazy stuff to me either. All right, don't shoot. Don't shoot your shot. Don't shoot your shot. Right, too you know. Well, look, Gary. Thank you so much, man, for joining us tonight. Wish you continued success with everything. We'll definitely be looking out for what you have to come, and uh, have a great night, man. Thank you so much, y'all. Y'all, thank you for having me. I appreciate you. All right, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> I'm so down for this Nirvana. I'm a cow for this Nirvana. I'm killing this Nirvana. I'm drilling this Nirvana. Slide. 
Stephen I show Adam how's it going how's it going good Stephen how are you cannot complain cannot complain survive the Monday what else can I complain about exactly <laughs> how was your weekend <laughs> yep it was pretty good pretty good the weather was nice on Sunday went up to the pool um, I saw you you had some pool time I guess it was yeah exactly uh, and Ty hey yeah, yeah, me, like me, Miss Parker, and Ty. Yeah, we went to a, went to actually a little pool party. It was kind of dead when we took the pictures, but it got a little more lively. <laughs> yeah, you guys made it work. You made you made it look fun. It was fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, can't complain. Nice. Okay, well, I'll let you guys take it away with uh, movie reviews. All right. Well, I'll start us off. So I saw the number one movie uh, in the box office this weekend, which was Mission Impossible: Fallout, and for. Um, Anyone counting? This is, I think, the sixth installment of the Mission, the sixth installment of the Mission Impossible series, uh, starring, of course, Tom, Ru- Tom Cruise, Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg, uh, and it's for me. So I, I like these Mission Impossible movies, and it follows, of course, kind of a new a storyline. And I watch them, I enjoy them. I don't remember the plot that much, and so I could tell you a little bit about what's going on in this one, but just to let you know, it's, it's another Mission Impossible where they're trying to save the world, and um, 
it's, it's what you define, I think, as a summer popcorn blockbuster movie. You know, it has what you're looking for in action. It has, of course, twists and turns. It has uh, all the great actors. Henry Cavill is in this one. Uh, and it's really just, uh, it's actually a continuation in the Mission Impossible world, which threw me off a little bit of the storyline. So it does help if you've seen the last, I'd say, two Mission Impossible. Definitely see the last one because uh, the storyline does involve uh, characters from that. But, uh, yeah, it was really fun. You know, Tom Cruise, I think, is nearing 60, and he, he still got it. He did all the action for his scenes. He did uh, offset, you know, one of the scenes he did injure his sh- um, ankle, mm-hmm. and so there was a little bit delay in filming for that. But, yeah, I uh, highly recommend. I enjoyed the action. Again, the storyline kind of threw me off a little bit because I didn't remember characters from the previous one. But they do a little bit of a good job of kind of getting you up to speed uh, and uh, keeping you on your toes. So definitely recommend this one. Nice. Absolutely. 61.5 million for the weekend. Mm-hmm. That, that's the one that, that I've been waiting for. Um, the most probably for the summer because I am a Mission Impossible fan myself. And um, surprisingly, Tom Cruise wanted to add uh, another, there was a couple other scenes that he wanted to add because there was a darker plot that he wanted to explore where uh, his character actually goes deep undercover to the other side and he has to convince them that he's really a part of the group and he actually murders some people. Um, but the producers told him not to put that in the film because it doesn't go with the trademark of the Mission Impossible brand. Mm-hmm. They wanted to keep it, you know, summer fun, family, and not so uh, sinister. But that would have been interesting. Yeah, I agree. And it was, you know, it was my one of my only other complaints is it was a little long. I felt like uh, some of the dialogue could have been cut, uh, unnecessary stuff. Um, it didn't feel long, but it definitely was on the longer side uh, at, I think, two and a half hours. Yeah, those action sequences are like the bomb. And the fact that he does the stunts himself is amazing. <laughs> if you definitely go check this out, if you're looking for that type of film, this is that type of film. Um, the next yeah. film is uh, Equalizer 2 with Denzel Washington. And this follows up to, of course, his Equalizer movie. And this is a fun fact. This is Denzel's first sequel ever in his life. In all the movies he's ever mm-hmm. been in, this is uh, his only sequel. And uh, to be honest, you know, the action and stuff is cool in the movie. You know, the gun-toting and the fighting, it's all brilliant. But what gets me the most about this film that there is a storyline between Denzel and um, a neighborhood kid and he's basically giving him knowledge and raising him up mentally um, about becoming a man. And he does it so subtly, and he, he's giving messages in the movie of what it is to become an adult and responsible adult. And I think that a lot of times in his movies, that gets underrated. And I think that if people paid attention more to the artistry of a Denzel Washington film they would really realize how brilliant he is, especially when he's, he has a hand in the production of it. His movies are mm-hmm. the And I see why he is Denzel Washington. And I highly recommend this movie. Uh, opening weekend, I think it did $36 million, and that had been out already. Um, I think it was the weekend before it was out. And, yep, uh, exactly. I didn't, see it then. I didn't see it then, but it brought in $36 million. You know, m- maybe not as much as Tom's movie, but it's still worth seeing. Definitely <laughs> check that out in the theater. <laughs> Yeah, and it's number three for last weekend, so it's still uh, still got a pretty strong, um, you know, base going on. So that's nothing to uh, forget. Okay. At all. Anything come down the pipeline? So I feel like we're hitting kind of the end of the summer lull, but I do want to see Black Klansman, which is the latest Spike Lee movie. That's not next weekend, but it's the weekend after. And uh, that one, I saw the trailer for it at Mission Impossible, and that one looks like a good one, and it's got a lot of good reviews so far. And it stars another Washington, <laughs> Denzel's son. 
Okay. Oh, I really? Think I, I think David, I've seen uh, John Davis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that's got a... Uh, what's his name? David? David Washington? John David. Yeah. John David Washington. Yeah, that's it. And um, I'm looking at this movie. I saw the previous four called White Boy Rick, where it's basically um, a young teenage drug dealer who actually turns informant. Uh, it should be pretty interesting, kind of like a Donnie Brasco style, but he's like the youngest drug dealer that becomes a baller and then becomes an informant. Yeah, and that one's based on a true story, I think, too, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. White Boy Rick. So, yeah, and that'll of be course, interesting. You know, I love my horror movies, and there's a horror movie coming up called Along Came the Devil. It's about possession. I love my horror films. Interesting. Horror you know, they're, they're doing a Slender Man, Slender Man movie, too. I don't know if yeah. that looks interesting to you or not, but uh, I was surprised so, to hear about that. Real, real quick, there is a Slender Man documentary uh, on HBO. I don't know if it's still on there now and if you can actively get it, but it's an HBO documentary. And sometimes they leave their documentaries in, like, in the queue, on the on-demand queue, so you might can pick it up. But it's based on a true story that these kids made up this creature, and this girl actually murdered another girl based off of... Mm-hmm. The Slender Man. So definitely check it out. It's a real thing. Check it out. I'm curious now to see what this movie is going to be about. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, guys, as always, thank you so much for letting us know what to spend our money on and what not to. Have a great week, and we'll talk next Monday. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you.
Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Janera, how's it going? Great. How are you, Stephen? Cannot complain. Survived another Monday. <laughs> <All right. laughs> How was your weekend? Uh, I, can't, I can't complain. I had a big family reunion here this weekend. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Um, I hope to never have one here again, but I do love my family dearly. <laughs> Did y'all eat good? We did, we did. We um we have like a, a Saturday night like banquet and then we do a picnic on or barbecue on um on Sunday. So we always have it in a different city every year. So oh nice. Was Atlanta. Yep. Okay, okay. Well now you got some wonderful stuff for us, so I'll let you take it away. I do, I do. So, you know, I just wanna let everybody know that um, you know, for those who have kids you sh- you probably already know. For those who don't, um, it's back to school, so um you know, already. A lot of schools are starting this week. It's already, I know. It, it seems like they just uh, got out of school, <laughs> but now, you know, they're going back in. So, um, you know, these might help towards your back to school savings. Um, so, Express is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get up to 75% off of your purchase. And I said, I'm sorry, not 75%, $75. And I say up to $75 because uh, you have to spend more in order to save more. So, you can get up to 75% off of your purchase. Uh, the Limited is having a sale on um, on their clearance items, and they are just starting at four fourteen ninety nine. Plus, you can get up to forty uh, percent off of regular price items. Uh, the Nordstrom Anniversary Sale is going on right now, and it'll be going on through Friday, which is the fifth, um, or whenever the fifth is. I believe it's no, that's actually not Friday. I believe it's Sunday. Uh, so it'll be going on through whatever day it is. It'll be going on through August fifth. So if you shop there now, you can save on tons of um, their anniversary sales, sale items. And a lot of times during their anniversary sale, they are uh, discounting um, their fall items. So, uh, you know, that's a, good, that's a good way to get a jump, jump start on your fall wardrobe. Uh, Bloomingdale's is having a sale now. And if you shop there, you can get an extra 20% off of their sale and clearance items for a total savings of up to 75%. Uh, Banana Republic is also having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get an extra 50% off of all of their clearance items. Plus, you can get um, up to 40% off of select items, select uh, styles, which are regular price. Old Navy is also having a sale, and you can get up to 30. I'm sorry, you can get 30% off of your purchase. J Crew is also having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get an extra 50% off of uh, their sale items. Today is the last day to uh, shop Nine West and get up to forty percent off of your purchase. And um, for everyone who has kids, you know who has kids, um, the children's place is having sale, and you can get sixty uh, percent on their entire store, as well as Carter's. They're having a sale, and you can buy one get one free on select items. But that was the last sale I have for you guys today. Awesome, awesome! And they can find all that at BudgetShopHolic.com, correct? They surely can. All right. Well, have a great week, and we'll just talk to you next Monday. Okay, I'll talk to you then. Okay, right back after. I can write a whole song about how I hate you, about how you played me and led me to believe that. You want me, but you just not ready So I'll wait around for your ass Yeah, I'm crazy But
But truth is I love you and I don't know why It's probably the way you look me in my eyes And you such a Pisces, yeah you put me on And you put me in my place when I'm too much I need that Just one time in my life, don't need no yes man This one nigga in my life, he's fucking honest I love him cause he's everything I wanted I need that Baby, I'm forgiving you Can we move on? Can we try this? Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do without you Baby, I can talk about the lack of communication How often you make me feel unappreciated How I could've been out tonight hanging with my girls But I'm with your ass all night cause that's what I prefer But truth is I love you and now I know why It's the way your hands fit perfectly in mine And you such a Pisces, yeah you put me on And you put me in my place when I'm too much I need that Just one time in my life, don't need no yes man This one nigga in my life, he's fucking honest I love him cause he's everything I wanted I need that Forgiving you Can we move on? Can we try this? Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do without you I need that, I need that Baby, I'm forgiving you Can we move on? Can we try this? Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do without you Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. A-Rod Cosby, how's it going? BBK. How's your weekend? What up? Good, good, man. Nothing exciting, you know, just playing. <laughs> but, but, but a good weekend, either way, right? Yeah, yes. All right. Yours? My weekend was cool. I lost some friends, went swimming yesterday. Um, but yeah, it was cool, it was cool. Jump on in. Yeah, let's jump on in. What's going on in the world of sports? Well, I am. I'm so full right now with LeBron James. Man. Yeah. I'm so proud mm-hmm. of this dude. Like, yeah. I said it before, he is my, like, that is my dude. Like, right. He, and Derrick Rose, like, those are my dudes. Like, NBA players, those are my dudes. That's like, different. current players, those mm-hmm. are my dudes. But, um, but yeah, Braun, man, he, like, he, he's, um, he's a very special person. Yeah. He, he, he is a beautiful person. I would just say that he really is a beautiful person. So, um, that, that school, man, I promise, like, it's, it's going to, that, that's only the beginning. I think that this man. Well, tell everyone what he did. Well, if you haven't, if maybe people haven't, <laughs> so heard, some don't. <laughs> um, yeah, some, some maybe haven't. He established a school, right? In in, in Akron, mm-hmm. and um, and it's free. Oh, I didn't know it was free. free. It was free. Okay, I think it's free. Yes. Yeah. I nice. Believe it's free. I, don't quote me on that, but I believe that it's okay. I don't know. If not... Actually, I'm gonna give me five seconds. We can still talk about it. Um, but pretty much, um, it's a school in Akron, and it's um, I think it that it is free. Okay, I think it is free. Yeah, and um, it's it's. A legacy like it's yeah that's um, major yeah it's it's for at-risk kids so mm-hmm. um inner city kids at risk at risk kids and it's it's just it's a place where kids
kids can go to learn without um, feeling society. Like, it. like it's 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 awesome. Like I I saw the um, video of it. Yeah, I saw it too. It's, if I was a kid, I would want to go there. Like, I'm like, yeah, mom, please. Can, it's can called the I like, Promise just School. So I, just so I can could go to the yeah. school. Yeah. Like, I would want to, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so I'm hoping that this is just the beginning. Like, he's going to have other schools in other cities throughout the country. Right, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm, let's see. I don't know if it is free. I, yeah, I don't. Let me not. Let me not say it's actually. Yeah, let me not say that. I don't know. Um, it's, it's still still a, a great a great uh, you know yeah, part of his legacy. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that they take donations. And I mean, yeah. So anyway, whether it's free, whether it's not, whether right. it's still, it is a. It's just a great thing. Exactly. It's, it's a great thing. And um, and if it's not free. I plan to donate. So Good. I'm donate some money to the cause and I hope that others do also. And you can go to LeBron James Family Foundation dot org to get more information. But um yeah, I just wanted to definitely start off by talking about Yeah, that, that was big. Great thing. Mm-hmm. great thing. All right. Moving on to the business of LeBron. He is proud to be a Laker. He can't wait to get on that court. And um, I'm I'm happy for him. I I just to see him wearing that purple and gold like it's. Yeah, wow. Did you see the pictures of him? His official pictures, the Lakers. Yes, mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. It's like man, like wow. You know, just I mean, okay. He's been on some good teams, but he but being on the Lakers that that is. The Lakers, the Celtics, um, the Bulls, even those teams are royalty. Like those are like the mm-hmm. Yankees, if you will, right. of the of the NBA. Like those are the teams that you that as a player you would love to play for. Like mm-hmm. you aspire to be yeah. a Laker. You aspire to be a Celtic. You know, um, and just I mean, think about it. You got. I can start off with Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Ab- mm-hmm. Ab- Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, yep. um, James Worthy. I mean, I can go on and this on. Goes on. Kobe and Shaq. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I mean, just, wow, 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 wow. And now LeBron James. Hmm. He's doing well. This is a good now. season for him. Now, question for you: Does this uh, does this automatically make the Lakers a con- contender? Oh, I would I would imagine, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say so also. I yeah, LeBron so. James. I think any team LeBron goes to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this is. I, I, I'm excited, man. I'm so excited, so so excited, so excited. Yeah. All right. Um, did you hear about? Um, and this this actually ha- this happened last week, but I'm going to talk about it now. All right, Kawhi Leonard. Do you know who he is? Mm-mm, who's that? He's he used to play for the um, Spurs. He had the cornrows. Oh, okay, okay. So what do you do? Well, he's no longer with the Spurs. He's now with the Toronto Raptors. Okay. Now, rumor had it, you know, rumor. The, it was rumors out there saying that and I don't even know if there if there are rumors now. I, I think that it was that that is known. He wanted to go to the Lakers to be with um to be with Mr. James. Like, okay. That's what he wanted to do. But last season he didn't play like he was he was hurt last season for the Spurs and then he kinda there was some issues going on with he and the management and he kinda you know it 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 got sour and it got ugly. So um, it seems to me that the Spurs kind of said, like, bro, just because you want to go to Lakers, we're not going to give you what you want. And you were kind of kind of shady towards yeah, us. Messy. We're going to throw the yeah. shade back at you. So we're going to trade you to Toronto. So he's with, with 
the Raptors right now. And um, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of set them up. <laughs> uh, it's, they set them up, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that after this 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 coming season, he'll be a free agent, I believe. I think that he's with – it's a one-year deal or something with um, – with the Raptors, and, and then possibly next year he might be with the Lakers or something. So something to that extent. So we'll 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 see. But if but if a healthy Kawhi Leonard is with LeBron James with the Lakers, oh man, man, man. Oh yeah, the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have no idea who. <laughs> Mr. Leonard well, is, but it's all. Well, I'm talking thing. about going to play with going there. play with LeBron. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Last thing. Do you know that? And I cannot believe this, man. There was. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Eighth inning, Yankees game. They unveiled a re-elect Donald Trump make Keep America what? Great Again 2020 banner at Yankee Stadium. Wow. I'm like, really? Really? Wow. Like, when is it? They, sports, when is this? When, what, what, the, what the hell is going on, man? Mm-hmm. Like that's, mm-hmm. I, I've never seen that before. I've never seen a vote for Barack Obama, Joe Biden. No. They usually keep it, keep the politics, out of, the the politics out of than the whole kneeling. Yeah. It, and it's so funny. Isn't that what they say? Let's keep politics right. out of sports. Yeah. But then you're going to bring politics right into. Oh, I can't. I can't take it, man. I'm it's, telling it's, you, this country is losing its mind right now. Nutty. So if mm-hmm. you get a chance, I don't know if you heard about it or not, but Mm-mm. but if you want to. It's on it's it's on social media. You can see the um, video, but you know you can Google search or whatever. It's there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that crazy. Fun. I'm like, wow. So people can't can't even you know go to a baseball game and just chill without seeing a freaking banner. And and it was huge. It was a big banner. It, it was big. Mm, that's ridiculous. But I'm like, damn. It's right. not even 2019 yet. It, right. It's not the the midterms haven't even came yet. And he's talking already talking about. Re- <laughs> oh, well, let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you. Me and Miss Park were talking uh, the other day about ignorant. There was this. Uh, you know, th- we've had this slew of uh, white people calling the cops on black people for doing nothing. Um, nothing. Well, there was a there was a woman. She was th- this white lady overheard this black lady selling her food stamps on the phone. She was on her cell phone arranging to sell them, and the white lady um, came up to her and you know. You know, confronted her, and the black girl, like, "Why are you in my conversation? Why are you in my conversation?" And the white girl was like, "Cause I'm a taxpayer." Da, da, da. And then she said, "We're gonna build that wall." Me and Ms. me and Miss Parker were like, "Why the black girl care about a wall? <laughs> They're just well, ignorant. Said, they are ignorant. Why would she care about a wall?" You do know that I'm in here. I'm American. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Not you gonna build that wall, it's, and she was dead serious too. First of all, okay, black sister girl, whatever. Okay, let me just hold this. Okay, let we gotta keep it one one hundred. Stephen, selling your food stamps is not that's not cool. That's not no, it's not cool. cool. It's but not, what's it to you? Exactly, I actually think that it's not that it's that it's not legal. No, it's not legal. It's it's not legal. It's illegal to sell your food stamps. Right, right. So I'm just saying that we are not condoning illegal right. activity on the Stephen Knight show. Right, exactly. Okay. All right, putting that to the side. Old girl should have minded her business. It was not her place to be the food stamp police. Exactly. Exactly. And so yeah, that's you know that's another thing. But uh, I actually heard the audio from that. I didn't see. It, so is there a video? For yeah, there's a video out there. Audio. Yep. So the video. Thing, I got mm-hmm. the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause she, she left. She cussed. She went off on it though. I loved it. <laughs> but when she said we're gonna build that, but when she said we're gonna build that wall, I'm thinking, why does she care about a wall? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, 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 I know the girl with the food stamps was, was kind of looking like confused. Like, like, <laughs> is that so? 
I think that is the is that the new racial slur or something now? Build that wall. Is that the new word for like? It's just a Trump supporter that's ignorant that doesn't know anything, and they're just and and she was just spewing out the things that she hears him say. Because no one in their right mind, because there are some intelligent, unfortunately, Trump supporters, right. but they wouldn't tell a black woman we're going to build that wall. Why would she right. care? Right. <laughs> I mean, not saying that oh, she doesn't no, care, but I'm saying it wouldn't impact also, her. <laughs> right. And here is another fact, people, that people with, you know, with an ounce of, I guess, brains would know. The majority of Americans on food stamps are white. Right. Exactly. That's a, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. It's a fact. It's, it's, it's not an opinion. It's not a guess. Right. That's a fact. It's not black people. So please, white people, stop saying this. Oh, you're Okay. White yeah. people, mo- the majority of people, Americans on food stamps are white. Exactly. Not black. Not Hispanic. Not Asian. Exactly. They're white. Okay. All right. So <laughs> that being said, all right. Anything else going on, Stephen? Any any more drama, crazy stuff with food stamps? And There's always something. Kids selling water and right. actors living, you know, living at home and getting the cops called on them for opening their own. Oh yeah, their own house. it's always something, but you know, it's always something. it is what it is. Okay. Well, stay stay safe, man. Um, do you plan on going to Florida anytime soon? Miami, I, anything? I don't have any plans. Not at this point. Okay, well, I'm just going to say, man, because, you know, we've all heard it, of course, that video with, with the man that was shot mm. you know, because he defended, you know, he pushed the guy, whatever, and got shot. Be careful, man. Yeah. If you go to Florida, please, please stay. Be careful because, um, and there's other states also that have that same, that, that same, same ground, ground ball, but yeah. Florida is, seems to be the ep- epicenter for this craziness. So, yeah. Just be safe. And true. that goes for everyone listening. Just be safe. Be careful. All right, Ron. Well, That's listen, it, thank it. you as always. Have a great, great week, and uh, talk next Monday, okay? Sounds good, brother. All right, and we'll be right back after this. <laughs> This is Savage. And this is Ty. And we are from the Articulate Podcast, and you are listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Well, that's our show. Special shout out to Gary uh, L. Gray for joining us tonight. Continue success with him. I want to thank you all for listening. Tell a friend, y'all. We're all over everywhere. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on iTunes. We're on iHeartRadio, Spotify. <laughs> Go to our website, thestevenightshow.com. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday. Good night. Everything's gonna be alright. I'ma see a pretty, pretty.